out. But I do believe in the power of art to create positive change. So this would be a really wonderful opportunity to just uh, communicate, create community, and just connect with each other. Um, I do know that beauty and creativity provide hope for sure. So even if the mo in the most difficult circumstances, uh, thank you, Noma and partners uh, for everything you do to support artists. And thank you artists for providing just beauty to the world, especially in these times. Um, so just as a quick background, uh, when I brought the idea of a women exhibit to Noma about 10 years ago, I knew there were a lot of talented women artists of town, uh, and every year we present a more diverse and more beautiful group of, of women artists. Um, the exhibit is beloved by the community. I am really sorry that we cannot do it in person. It's usually a wonderful, wonderful talk and closing. Uh, but we are here all together, yes. uh, and that's a good thing. So thank you for for for. for. Um, I want to introduce uh, Anofela Rodriguez of, Pro of Broadway Housing. Uh, she has been really generous in providing us with the space of uh, Rio Gallery, which is a beautiful space, we all know. Uh, thank you so much, Anofelia, for everything you do for artists and for the community of town. Uh, so please say a few words and welcome. Let me, ladies. Ladies, thank you, thank you so much. I am so grateful for the exhibitions that have been really set up at Broadway Housing Communities. You cannot believe how emotional I became when on the 13th I decided to close the doors to the gallery because I didn't want anyone to come up uh, and be contaminated and then we'd be in a bigger problem. It has been a very hard, hard week had three weeks, but the art that was produced this year is out of series. I am so honored that Broadway Housing allowed us to do this for this length of time. We want this to continue. We have made great friends. We have really risen the morale of artists in the community that never thought that they could exhibit their work. We are humbled by the appreciation you have all shown to us. And let's pray that this storm blows over soon so we could carry on the work that we started doing in Northern Manhattan. Thank you so much and bless all to all, blessings to all of you. I'm happy you. to be your partner. Thank you. Thank you so much, Anophelia. Gone mute. Yeah. Nidia? Nidia. Ah, here I am. Welcome, everybody. Um, I am so heartened by this um, Zoom gallery that I'm looking at, um, but I'm not surprised. Um, artists have always been the pulse of, of the human experience. Um, we are the great documentarians of, of, of what it is to, to feel, to love, to express. Um, so while heartened, again, not surprised. Um, and I'm happy uh, to be here and feel honored to be here um, tonight um, and as the sort of acting executive director. And I want to thank everybody, Andrea, um, Michelle, Joanna, of course. Um, and uh, we are Noma strong here, and we are um, artists strong here. And so my job is also to give thanks um, also to our partners, to New York City Department of Cultural Affairs, to City Council, to Broadway Housing Communities, to Sugar Hill Children's Museum of Art and Storytelling, um, and to our partners, to Blake um, and to Northern Manhattan Improvement Corporation. Um, my job is to thank all of you, all of you for being here, all of our partners, and all of us who are in this together. Um, and um, 
as I said, art is um, our way forward. And so um, thanks to all of you uh, for your contributions, for being here tonight, for being here um, as we begin to weather the storm together. And so um, I, I turn now to you, Andrea, I think that you're, um, the, the best is yet to come. So it's, it's, um, it's Thank you, Nuria. Thank you so much. Um, yes, we're stronger together for sure. Uh, Joanna, Joanna Castro, are you? Where's Joanna? Okay. Joanna. Oh, Joanna. <laughs> hello, can you hear me? Yes. Hear you. Yes. Hey, um, hello and, and good evening, everyone. I hope everyone is well and safe. I see a couple of glasses of wine, so cheers. <laughs> Whoever's drinking water, fine too. Um, just a quick reminder uh, we have a chat box, and if you hit uh, everyone as we're speaking or as folks are speaking, if you want to uh, write comments, please feel free to, uh, to do so. Um, we'll be checking them and, and um, because I have a feeling that many uh, might repeat uh, and we'll try to go through the list in order. The other was um, I also wanted to add to the thank you to Dulce, a uh, fabulous cook uh, who works a lot with Ophelia, who she, Perdomo and Marcia were such graced and graced, um, graceful hosts at the opening. Um, and just really being gentle and uh, intentional and mindful. And we were still able to have drinks and yummy food. So um, that's my, my little spiel. So thank you. Thank you so much, Joanna. So I have asked the artists uh, to, to speak uh, for approximately one minute. So they will share something about their work and inspiration. Uh, an image of each artist's work will appear as they speak, so we'll be able to see uh, what we will be seeing at the gallery if we were there. But uh, thank God for technology. And uh, our first artist is Julan. Julan Gebi, we see her image now. Julan? You need to unmute me. Yes, thank you for bearing with us. You, you're on now. You have to unmute yourself, dear. You can't hear. Yes. You have to. Okay, this is going to be a little bumpy, maybe, but. Um, did unmute her. There, there you go. Okay. She's Did it work? Yes. Yes. Okay. Great. Yeah, Thank Sid, you. you had to unmute me. I couldn't do it myself. Okay. Okay. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Julianne Gebby. Um, my piece is titled The Power of One Strike for Climate. Uh, it's a protest picture. And it depicts the slogans and images that resulted from the September 2019 climate march led by Greta Thunberg in uh, New York City and around the world. Uh, the picture is made of stoneware and it's also made on a potter's wheel in four different parts. I have my little picture here where you can see my vessel and the base and the, the handle and the spout are the four different pieces. And uh, once it was bisque, did, then I did uh, hand paint all the drawings that are on it. Um, I let the shape guide me on what should go where. And I felt that Greta was the heart piece of the piece. So she needed to be in the center spout at age 15 with her pigtails standing alone in front of the Swedish parliament and with her poster saying uh, strike for climate. And fast forward one year and millions of people around the world are protesting with her. And I show this uh, through a sea of heads that surround the spout. And I feature a silhouette of three children uh, holding up their signs that say, uh, make the earth great again, uh, rise up, and fight or die frying. 
and they are all on top of a green world that says end climate science. Uh, the surrounding area of the picture shows the melting of the icebergs into a polluted ocean of garbage and plastic eating and strangling sea life. You know, a polar bear floating alone on a tiny piece of ice, uh, the Statue of Liberty drowning in the ocean, and a Noah's Ark uh, saying we're going to need a bigger boat. Uh, all of them are around an earth which says uh, there is no planet B. Uh, the bottom of the pictures handle, there is a house on fire leading to a smoke stacks that are floating around the rim and clogging the earth's air. Uh, around the base are the wildfires that continue to break out around the world and the charred skeletal remains of life in ruins. And when you look inside the picture, it's a, a flaming red with the text, uh, if the climate was a bank, it would be saved by now. <laughs> and Thank you, how does this apply to hope for the future? But it was really Greta, one little girl, alone in front of a building that really prompted the entire world to rise up and take note. Thank you, Julan. Thank you so much. Uh, Taisha is next. Hello everyone, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, my piece is entitled African Woman in Harlem. It's part of a new exploration I'm working on with Women in Grace. Um, African Women in Harlem shows um, a flow of an environment, how she is in her space, um, the confidence and the grace of her ancestors is a synchronicity that everyone has. And it's an internal rhythm and a natural flow from us as women. What is shown here is that connective energy that elevates the vibration that comes from within. African Woman in Harlem shows the elevated emotions and the freedom that created from a proud life. Um, I feel like this is a good platform for all of us because we are socially distant. We're physically distant, but we are socially connected. And I really, really enjoy the opportunity to do this with everyone. Thank you so much, Taisha. Uh, Maggie, Maggie Hernandez. Maggie, could you tell me what you're logged in as, please? Is Maggie in the room? Hi, I've unmuted everyone. Is Maggie in the room? Maggie Hernandez? It appears that, hello? Okay, so... Let's come back to her, maybe. I'm sure that she's not here, so. Um, so let's continue. Uh, yeah. Lynn. So this was, uh, this was her. Uh, ah. They're not in order. Who is next? Yes, who is next? Sorry. Um, I have Bonnie Phillips. And, um, oh, she's right here, actually. Bonnie just joined our group. Oh, okay, welcome, Bonnie. I have to unmute her. Okay. Yeah, I have everybody muted. Um, here we go. Bonnie. Yes. Yes, hello. Hi. Okay. Hi, Bonnie. Tell us a little bit about your piece, please. Okay, so um, my piece um, was, is a self-portrait that I did um, several years ago. Um, and it really was to capture that state of myself when I'm painting with the uh, um, paint brushes um, in my mouth, in my hair, and so on. So I just wanted to capture that moment as an artist. Thank you, Bonnie. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Maggie Hernandez, is she here? I've unmuted, every, I've unmuted everyone briefly, so if Maggie, I don't believe she's here. Okay, so uh, Linda here, I see her, so. Who is next? Oops, sorry, Andrea. Oops, <laughs> you were on mute. Please continue. Who was next? Lindell. Ah. Uh, Linda. Um, it's, um, I am a mixed media artist, and um, however, my photography is my baseline. Oh, this is Linda Bonilla. Hold on, Linda. Linda Hold on. Bonilla. She's not, that's not the order. That's, okay. that's, that's me, that's me. Yes. yes I do. I do. <laughs> Thank you, Michelle. Okay. Um, so I am a mixed media artist. So photography is my baseline. And I, with photography, I document, I do a lot of research, and I also do portraiture. Um, but this particular piece that I have in the show, this is, um, it's untitled, but it technically has a long name. <laughs> um, but I won't go into it. But it's basically a narrative of Latinx during the 90s in New York City. Um, it's reflective of kind of like semi-biographical, it's reflective of biculturalism fused with pop culture and references, and um, I would dare say some spirituality to it at the time when I made it. Um, it's just funny when you just, when I work on a process and collaging, mixing. We're losing audio. Yes, let me, let me put it back on, excuse me. Okay, sorry, Linda. It's okay. Okay. Now we should be able to see you and hear you. Okay. Do you know what part I cut off from? Uh, no? Nah? Okay, so, in okay. short, this is a mixed media piece of, my, of photography and my influence of magazines. Well, I used to work in magazines a long time ago. Um, this is a narrative piece that reflects Latinx during the 1990s in New York City. And uh, just understanding that this narrative is not really explored as much in the 90s. And I feel that I'm starting to really build work that reflects Latinidad during the late 80s, 90s, which is the prime time for me where it was so impressionable in my 20s. And just seeing, reflecting it now in my 40s, how how things have changed vastly, but still stay the same. And, um, but documenting the beige, which is between the paint, you know, it's just, it's, a, it's always been a process. And uh, I just hope to keep uh, exploring that with more work. Thank you. If you have any questions, let me know. Thank you. Linda. Um, next. Okay, so. I know Lindell is here. Lindell, let me unmute you. Right, so. Hello. Hello. Hello Thank you, first of all, Noma, for making this happen. Andrea, Joanna. Michelle, appreciate so much the opportunity and the unity of like artists. I'm always inspired by everyone who's joined and everybody who always shows in this. It's amazing. Anyway, to speak close quickly about my work, um, I was fascinated by the um, Saint Lucia, which was a story about um, a martyr, Christian martyr, and I looked into it and I saw this amazing um, portrait by Francisco del Cosa, who was in it was um, painted in the 15th century. And it coincided with this amazing conversation that I had with one of my beat poets out of the Bronx. And I do portraiture oil, kind of old fashioned portrait portraitures. And I did a combination with um, an amazing artist called Rosa Angelica. She lives in the Bronx and she wrote about this piece. She's a spoken word and she's a writer and she wrote, by weapon I rose and by weapon I'll fall. 
my beloved pen, the weapon chose me. If it is healing you seek, let it fight for you as it did for me. So Rosalina Angelica is the subject of my portrait and she's a writer and I like the idea of the Saint Lucia who also protects writers and creatives and people who work with visions either in storytelling. So I try to tell stories with my portraiture as well. And I will say that about pretty much says it. <laughs> Thank you so much again for your wonderful support. Appreciate it. Thank you. Susan, Susan Bresler. I'm here. Hi, Susan. Hi, thank you, Andrea. Thank you, Joanna. Okay, um, my piece is a happy quilt too. Um, yeah, there it is. Okay, um, I studied architecture and got a Bachelor of Architecture from Pratt Institute. And um, this pure geometry is how I try to create a, a world of order, a beauty in order in a world that is chaos. And in this piece, I have selected forms from nature, like uh, small animals and leaves and stars and uh, flowers, and placed them all within colors that set them off like their uh, individual jewels, you know, that we should admire for their beauty. So it was very spontaneous, you know, me going to the, the uh, collaging and uh, origami paper and uh, magazine things and just expressing how beautiful I felt these things from nature, you know, really are. Thank you, Susan. Uh, Elizabeth Starcevic is joining us by phone. Elizabeth, can you hear us? Let me hear her. Oh, can you hear me? Yes. Elizabeth. Yes. Okay. Yes. So my piece, which I would like to see, yes. This is, <clears throat> I was in Mexico, I do my weaving in Mexico. I have many, many pieces. And this, this is a response and, um, and an inclusion of the Women's March. We had a small Women's March in Mexico where I was, but many of you perhaps even participated in 2018 uh, with the Women's March. And the way I have it in envisioned here is that it started somewhat small at the bottom on the sidewalk, which are the gray lines on either side. And then little by little, all the colors, all, all the women joined together and the march kept getting larger and larger and larger. And this topic, which we all know is a topic for us now within um, the virus time is a topic that's touching ever, all the women who are being oppressed at the moment with the, with the ideas around uh, the way in which the law will not let them have access to women's health. So we have to keep that in mind very, very clearly and make a lot of noise about it. And this piece is uh, a lar large, but of course, it doesn't have it doesn't have uh, pink pussy hats on it, but it has the pinks and the browns and the and the and the brunettes and all of the colors of the many many women who were there. Thank you. Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you so much. Uh, Nadima, is Nadima here? Uh, can you pass me by? It's something came up and I, I can't speak right now. Can you have somebody speak before sure, me? Sure, sure. Okay. Marn, hi Marn. I'll sign Marn. Oh, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Hello. Hi there. Hi. hi. Um, I'm very excited to 
see everybody here virtually. Um, I missed the opening and then went out of town. So I am safely in Portland, Oregon and stuck here until further notice. So I'm really happy to see you all here and thank you for including me. Um, my piece is uh, called The Future is a Female Voice. I didn't see it. Uh, there it is. So this is uh, an infrared video still. So it is a uh, frame grab from a thermal imaging camera. And that is actually me screaming in that photograph. And so thermal imaging registers uh, heating and cooling temperatures that are actual temperatures. So anything that is cold or wet is dark. The lighter areas is where it's more heat. Um, and so this piece was more of a reference to the Me Too movement that has been happening. And then the kind of the subtext of using this um, thermal imaging is a reference to the kind of current surveillance culture, um, which is you know rather eerie. So I'm trying to make something beautiful out of very eerie and kind of somewhat sinister um, surveillance technology. This is military grade surveillance technology that I have limited access to. So, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Marn. We have a Maria Fernandez. Maria? Changes. Um, I met um, Alicia back in 2015. She come from a town in um, San Juan, about three hours from the capital, uh, from the capital in Dominican Republic. She lost um, her house and all her property and documents. And back in 1998. And she was showing me how finally she got her documents to be able to vote and make changes. Because regardless of her age, she was 83 at the time, she was still fighting. And even though she lost everything, the government didn't give her anything, she still believed that with her vote, she has a voice. Definitely. Thank you, Maria. Sally, Sally is next. Hi, Sally. Hmm. Let's... Uh, okay. Sally, are you in the room? I'm not having people finding you. Okay. okay. <laughs> There you go. Gotcha. Okay. Sally? Yes. Yes. Hi, sorry. I'm a little distracted because we're having our community board general meeting, so I sort of have to listen to that too. Um, but I'll be really quick. This was um, one of two pictures that I took. Um, I had a fairly bleak outlook, and it's only gotten bleaker um, under the Trump administration for how I thought they treated women and gays and sort of any population that wasn't white male. Um, so I, there were actually two pictures I can show you, but you can sort of see it. The second image that went along with this was to represent gays. It was, it was another mannequin picture that I took in, the, in um, Hell's Kitchen. But basically, um, sort of conveying my sort of bleak outlook for the future in terms of women being discarded. So I just felt like um, Western society was moving closer to Eastern um, society and how they treated women. So that's about it. And it was a picture that I actually saw outside. It was, I took it um, behind the farmer's market. It was actually an image that, you know, I looked out the window. My son came home actually, and he said, mom, you have to see what's in the trash can um, by, by the farmer's market. So I took a picture outside my, out my window, and then I went down and photographed it. But it's pretty simple, but it's really representing how women are um, viewed. So that's about it. Anyway, it's great to see everyone. I'm feeling incredibly isolated. So it's nice to see all these faces and I really appreciate all the work that um, Andrea and crew put on um, and Noma to get this exhibit up. Um, I'm sorry that more people weren't able to see it. Thank you so much, Sally. Thank you. Lilia, Evan.
or Tamara? Like say hours. hello to say hello to everybody. Uh, Hi. Okay, now go back to your room. <laughs> uh, that's real life. Real life. Everybody. Yeah, my it's husband beautiful. is um he's recovering, but he's quarantined right now in the other room. Um. Okay. So let's uh see. Uh, Tamara or Lilia? Okay. Sure. I know that they're here. All right. <laughs> Tammy. Is it Tammy? Yes. Okay, okay. Tammy. Great. Tamara, it's fine. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes, you can. Yes. Okay, great. Thank you for having us. Um, I took this photo last year's Women's March, and uh, I primarily do black and white street photography, especially protests and rallies. And I'm just especially interested in capturing uh, different women and their concerns and their voices. And I wanted to capture these two Latina women who are right in front of the sign that says Viva La Mujer. And I just sort of like the feline imagery that was rep re repeating itself in this image. And uh, that's pretty much it. Thank you, Tammy. Just quick question, what year was this? Last year. Okay, great. Lilia, Lilia Levin. So that's Hi, can you hear me? Yes, hi Lilia. Hi. Um, so I do mostly, um, I do a lot of pen and ink drawings and in the other shows I've had them. And usually they have been representational and there's usually a woman in them and a woman's psychology or soul. And then lately I started doing abstract drawings of windows, of a lot of windows. And uh, I kind of, um, thought of it as something liberating. And I put together in the center of this picture, a drawing that I had done maybe five years ago of a woman that seems to be, you know, a little overwhelmed or looking, look, searching for a way out or looking for her place in the world. And then all these windows opening up. And I think their recognition of historical oppression of centuries of it, um, is is a is like a vehicle to liberation and that's why it says they're open up and um i also like the fact that this frame this this frame with uh little openings and a big opening in the in the center was called something like growing up frame so it's for a kid it's for a child maybe in the center there would be a graduation and in the pictures of small you know you know what i'm saying pictures of, of the child as he grows up or she. And so this has something like that in it, like a, a growth and liberation of a woman. Thank you so much, Lilia. Hey, Patricia, Patricia Miranda. Hi, Patricia. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Hi. Hi. Thank you, uh, Noma and um, Joanna and Andrea and Michelle and Nidia. It's so great. And uh, hello, you powerful uptown women. I'm so excited to be a part of this um, community. This um, piece is a handmade book. Um, it's, called, it's part of a series of books called Morning Books, and that's morning as in grieving, not as the time of day. Uh, it's handmade paper that I dyed with uh, natural indigo and then sewed into a book using, uh, it's woven with uh, horsehair and freshwater pearls. I use natural materials in my work as an environmental statement. 
And I think a lot about the conflation of women's bodies and the earth and how that has been used as a justification for exploitation of both women and the earth. So the morning books are, they're lamentation books, like grieving books um, over the violence against women and nature. Thank you so much. Thank you, Patricia. Kat? Next. There you go. Hi, Kat. Can you hear us? I just. There we go. Hello. Can you hear me? Hi, Kat. Hi. Um, so tell sorry. us a bit about your work. Sorry? Tell us a bit about your work. Yes. Um, I have been, I work in a lot of different media. I've been doing these striking paintings for about a year and I started just working with shapes. Um, but the political climate gets more and more. Um, uh, fun way to incorporate a lot of the um, activism work that I do, which has uh, largely been focused on getting out the vote lately um, uh, with this year of our uh, centenary of uh, our right to vote. Um, so I um, used the, the word instead of just shapes and incorporated the female symbol um, into the stripes and um, put all sorts of different skin tones in the female shape there um, to really um, explore the idea that if women can vote in their own interests and together um, that uh, we can start to uh, right this ship. Um, it's uh, Please, I'm I uh, I'm very excited to vote. <laughs> we lost audio for a moment there, but thank you, Kat. Maybe we can come back later. Um, okay. Do we have Wilhelmina? I see Wilhelmina. She's here. Okay. Hi, everybody. Hi. Hi. It's great to be here with you all. Uh, this piece is uh, entitled, Oh Yeah, Mother of Transformation or Goddess of Transformation. And she represents that energy from the Yoruba Pantheon from West Africa, uh, the Orishas in West Africa. She stands for, uh, she represents the fierce, powerful female warrior. Um, uh, she's the controller of the marketplace. And she wields a copper sword. And she's also a uh, goddess of transformation as well as goddess of the wind. And the wind and transformation go hand in hand because things like uh, a storm or a tornado or uh, some extreme weather, after that passes through, there's a change. Um, well, I was timing myself. My time is up already. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Anyhow, um, Yes, yeah, so uh, the, the um, copper, metal copper that she has of her sword is also associated with protection. So even though she comes with seemingly some um, destruction, she also comes with protection. And I had no idea when I made this piece and submitted it for the show that it would really have a strong representation uh, as to what we're going through right now, a big transformation. So I guess that's my time. and. Thank you all for being here. This is great. Thank you, Wilhelmina. Thank you so much. Uh, Yael is next. So I'll we'll hear myself. Hello. Hi, Yael. Hey, Anna. And uh, thank you, everyone. Um, really great to be here. Um, about my piece, um, very weird how. Uh, things kind of change and give different meaning to, to, to what we create. So that image is basically, usually I work on long-term projects and I work outside of the home, but I 
do have more than 1,000 images that I've been taking through my window over the years, and this is the view. And for years, I didn't know what to do with them. And then, you know, when I saw the title of this exhibition, Creating for the Future, I thought to kind of experiment. And I started layering uh, images and, and see how, you know, different layering brings different results. So this is one image out of a few that I created. And yeah, it's it just extremely weird because in, in the last few days when I've been teaching online, the first assignment that I give my students is, you know, go to your window and start taking pictures. So that is a, one variation of, of the, what I see from my window. And it's, it's combination of that specific image is probably about 10 images from different years. And it's a collaboration. I, I've been asking my, my children kind of, what they think and how we should create it. So I don't know if you see like the, the single person, you know, on the bottom of it and then the moon on the other side and just kind of, you know, not knowing what the future will bring, which um, unfortunately or not, you know, uh, kind of symbolize very much where we are at it now. That's that. Thank you, Yael. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yashu you Tanaka. He was here earlier. The organizing the exhibition. And so, and uh, thank you for the Andrea and uh, selecting the combat paper for my work because this work is uh, very much timely for my feeling now because combat paper is the process of the veterans take off and cut their uniforms. Go ahead, Yashu, you who are listening. Hello. Go ahead. Hello, Hello. Did, you, did you hear? Yes, yes, go ahead. Okay, okay, okay. So, uh, the, so combat paper is, uh, you know, creating the artwork for, you know, from their uniform. And so this is a great process to transform their lives. And uh, many soldiers were working to rescue and victim of coronavirus <laughs> instead of war right now. And uh, so, you know, natural disaster causing the virus and climate change. And uh, so those are increasing now. So I sincerely hope that the United States Army transform their job to protect our lives from the natural disaster instead of killing the people in the other countries, such as uh, like our mother's countries, you know. And uh, uh, the, I start remembering the September 11 happened and, uh, you know, they start going to the war and I hope uh, doesn't repeat uh, like this kind of problem. And uh, so, starting this time and we'll go through the many changes mm -hmm. and uh, such, uh, such as, you know, like our concept and value and uh, how, I uh, how we live. So I hope we can work uh, together for this transition time and uh, using art for our healing and transformation. And uh, so, uh, you know, I'm so glad to be a part of this community, and uh, thank you very much for everyone. Thank, thank you so you. much to you. Adalki? Adalki, go ahead. Hi there. Um, my name is Adalki. Um, I'm a painter from Washington Heights. Um, and the painting that I have displayed there is called Amandita. Um, it's short for Amanda. I mean, it's longer, but in our like nickname narrative, it's a nickname for one of my close friends called Amanda. Amanda Alcantara, she's a writer, she's a journalist, and she's an author of a book that just recently came out. Um, but I think what I want to do as an artist is literally, I would say, paint reminders that People are strong and resilient, regardless of different challenges that are being thrown at them. At them. Um, as a housing organizer and as an organizer in my community, I think that a lot of my inspiration stems from 
literally Washington Heights, whether that's train interaction, whether that's neighborly conversation, whether that's literally mom and, and Vestina conversations. I think that for me, I'm just really interested and in connections and people and fragments of life. Um, this has been a really wonderful way of capturing different art from women. And I felt like this whole show, how do you say to it, to be online is the future. And I think that that is in the title. And I didn't even realize that till this was all online. So we are the future and for us to have this power of, of being able to do this at this time and still moving forward is, is something that is reflective of the current times. So thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Adalki. Selena, are you there? Hi, Selena. Hi. <laughs> I'm trying to make, I'm managing the, my two boys. Mm -hmm. Okay. Go ahead, Selena. Hi. Um, so I think I'm the only one who submitted a poem this year. And um, this is part of a sort of a larger piece. Hello, everybody. Um, uh, this is part of a larger piece that I'm writing called Pick a Struggle. And the title of this piece is Pick a Struggle. And I'm going to read it for you. Okay. I'm a mother. I'm a partner. I'm a daughter. I'm a sister. I'm a friend. I'm a teacher. I'm a leader. I'm an inventor. I'm an advocate. I'm a problem solver. I'm a fighter, a peacemaker a multitasker, I'm a cook, I'm a cleaner, I am so much more. I am a woman. I am enough. Pick a struggle. Pick a struggle. Pick a struggle. We wear many hats as the saying goes. How we manage it, God only knows. Perhaps we don't even think about all the things we do day in, day out. In a society that loves to label, one day put all your cards on the table. I'm sure it's way more than you can see. And then pat yourself on the back and say, good for me. It's not to brag or to boast, but to acknowledge you do the most. It's not always obvious all these things we are until you reflect and see, wow, I've come far. You can get caught in the rat race and the negative chatter. There's so many things we do that really matter. So yes, I talk about a few struggles I face, but I wanted to start off in a positive place. If no one has yet acknowledged it today, for all that you do, I give all of you a personal hooray. It's a rough world, you gotta be your own support. Don't let folks who talk about walls try to distort what your own truth is, which is you are great. Everyone else will learn soon enough. They're just late. Thank you. Thank you so much, Selena. That was beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Nadima, are you there? Can you hear us, Nadima? I'll get her. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, go ahead, Nadima. Okay. Uh, can I got another call. I'm so sorry. Can you go some, someone go before me again? The, you're the last artist to go. So, yeah. Uh -huh. You're the last artist and we only okay. have 10 minutes. Also. Just yeah. a minute. I got to get rid of this call. Is there anyone else in the room who hasn't spoken? I'm, I'm unmuting everybody now. So, is there anyone in the room who hasn't spoken? Me. Me. Okay, your name, please. Uh, Toto. Ah, okay. Great. Thank you. Um, so I can hear you. I'm going to mute everybody and then I'll unmute you. So you have my, I mean, you have my piece on the screen. Thanks for Hello? Yeah, you go ahead and, uh, if you don't mind. Yes. Okay, so in August, on August 26, 1920, um, the 19th Amendment was officially uh, adopted and women finally had the right to vote. 
Uh, the piece that, uh, not that one. <laughs> I'm sorry, your name again? Rose. Rose. Oh, Rose, sorry, Rose. It's okay. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna mute everyone and then unmute Rose, and then that will be able to hear her clearly. Okay. Okay. Tell me when. Okay. Yeah. There's still. Uh, go ahead. Okay. So on August 26. 1920, uh, the 19th Amendment was officially adopted by the United States, giving women the right to vote. Um, the piece I have is um, a ceramic clay slip with um, um, copper, uh, copper a bustle skirt, um, and it's kind of reminiscent of the suffragettes. Um, that had to um, that that move the battle forward so that women could um, have um, the vote. Uh, and this year we celebrate its 100th anniversary. And I'm wondering, especially in the crisis that we're going through now, how um, when was the last big change that a protest was able to enact? that our voices is uh, less and less. Um, but I just kind of like with this piece, I just want to focus on those women who took the time, who went to the streets, who marched and um, made the move to get us the vote. Thank you, Rose. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I I, I want to thank you all. It's it's a beautiful uh, yeah. journey around the medicine wheel. Uh, the, the medicine yeah. wheel re represents the four sacred colors of, of humanity. Okay. And to see all these beautiful women from all the four colors of the world, and it's like a vision, like a, a journey. Anyway, I was listening to the women. It was real interesting. My work is is not about oppression. And it's not about having to decide because I come from a community of women, indigenous women who have never been oppressed by indigenous men um, and who, um, who have powerful uh, presence. So um, we have always decided because the clan mothers made decisions for the men when they went to make treaties with the Europeans uh the the clan mothers made the decision so i'm coming from a place of empowerment and like i you know i don't feel oppressed um and the piece that i did is from a show called lady liberty as a native american icon i curated the show it was at the ellis island immigration museum we took the we took the icon of statue of liberty and we looked at it from a different perspective. We looked at it because even though she has a Western European uh, appearance, natural liberty represents America and represents us as women. So this is a self-portrait. It's real interesting. A lot of people did portraits tonight. A lot of self-portraits and portraits. Very interesting. Uh, so here she this is a self-portrait of me many years ago when I was much bigger, heavier. Um, I had a, um, this is a, 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 a self-portrait of me in the four sacred colors representing uh, all the four directions, etc., and all the medicine wheel um, symbolism. But she's holding her, her fan up like the Statue of Liberty is holding the torch. And it was really interesting because when I did this piece, there was no, I had nothing to do with the Statue of Liberty. But then when I curated the show and I said, you know, it's really interesting that this is when the women dance, they hold their fan up when the, the drummers are drumming, they call it honor beat. So they hold their fan up to go with the beat of the drum. And so that was the pose that I 
presented myself as a powwow dancer uh, for the drum beat, but it worked out that it was a symbol of, uh, of Statue of Liberty, Lady Liberty, as a Native American icon. Thank you, Nadima. Thank you. Joanna, Joanna is on the line. Hi, hello. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Hey, Joanna, go ahead, yes. Thank you. Uh, my work uh, is part of this book. Uh, it's called, Hello, I am Kitty. It's a book that talk about uh, Latino immigration in U.S., especially in Times Square with the community of the people who used to dress as uh, American icons like Hello Kitty, Mickey Mouse, Statue of Liberty. So the picture that you are looking at uh, is part of the book, and the book is a photo book. Uh, so you can see the story behind the mask of the character in Times Square. Um, this book was made in Medellin, Colombia uh, last year. Uh, I am a photographer from Colombia. Uh, and uh, I want to uh, uh, introduce more about the book and the photography that I submit. But unfortunately, it's difficult for the moment to talk in this way. Oh, here we go. I am here. So as I'll show you, uh, this is the kind of photography that the book is taking uh, off. Uh, I call it I am Hello Kitty because uh, I used to work as a Hello Kitty in Times Square. Uh, these kind of pictures are made through the eye of the Hello Kitty mask. Uh, that's why you can see the, all the black of the picture that I submit. And uh, I'm gonna let in the chat a place where you can see more about the book. And if you have questions, you can also write me or whatever you need. Uh, thank you again, Noma, for the opportunity to share us in this moment. It's very awkward to talk in that way with computers and delays. We are making the best, we're trying. Uh, and I'm ha happy to be here. Thank you so much, Joanna. Thank you. Uh, is anyone else in the room that hasn't spoken yet? I think so. I think we have uh, everyone, right? Yes, I've unmuted everyone. So. Is everyone? Okay, did everyone everyone speak already? I think so. Okay, so thank you, thank you so much, artist. It is I know this is a little bit uh, awkward just speaking to a screen, but I so appreciate you uh, joining us. I think it's super important right now to keep connecting, to keep connected. Uh, we're running out of time. If we are uh, able, I would love to extend maybe for 10, 15 minutes more, if you like, uh, just so we can talk a little bit more. Um, before uh, we continue, I want to just make sure I acknowledge, of course, everyone who's making this possible, including, of course, Joanna Castro of NOMA, uh, Michelle Orsi Gordon, who's uh, helping us going through this uh, first uh, program via Zoom. Uh, Niria uh, Leiva, of course, uh, of NOMA, uh, and Ophelia Rodriguez of uh, Broadway Housing Communities, as well as Ellen Bach. No. Um, was that Ophelia? Uh. Maybe not. Uh, so we are really on uncharted waters, all of us. We don't know how long this would last, but it will pass. It will take you know, a lot of effort from all of us. I hope that you are feeling strong. I know it's very difficult. And there's only one thing that I know for sure, and is that you know now more than ever, we are interdependent. We just are, and we need to support each other. And, 
uh, in terms of resources, NOMA and other art organizations are sharing different resources that are available for artists. So be sure to check online. Um, if you if you have any resources that you want to share, please contact NOMA and maybe we can share that as well. Um, I just want to throw one question to all of the artists right now. And, uh, you know, you can answer just very, very briefly because we're really out of time. But I just want to know what your feeling is in terms of what is the role of artists right now? So anyone who wants to speak, just go ahead. Everyone is unmuted, so just let us know. Catalyst. Catalyst for, for for making this kind of depending on the media or just arts in general to just transition it into into something that's that can be I guess recorded and documented and this is going to be I, I I can imagine there's a lot of amazing work that's produced at this moment. Yeah. Anyone else want to answer? Add pleasure to bring Sally? pleasure to bring pleasure to a very dark situation, to give a distraction, to give something yeah. nice to look at. You took your morning pills. Here's your after, here's your night pills just before you go to bed. The documentation is good, but I think the escape is even better. Huh? Thank you, Sally. Anyone else like to uh, answer the question? Yeah, you can take yeah, the I, think, I think that it's important to. Um, to be in your feelings and be in the moment and, and, and not rush yourself to be artistic and remember that you're a person and your feelings are valid. And then when the, when it's organic, when it's, when it's, when it's right, then to, 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 to create your art and, and, and share it because it's important. But I think that it's not important. I think that it's also important to not lose sight that we're people and that we got to be in the moment and recognize and then share. Thank you, Selena. And I think that as artists, we also have to be able to create a situation of beauty out of everything. You know, we have to be the voice that people don't, are not able to express and show that there's beauty in every scenario. Even in looking at the pictures that were shown to us today, where everyone can find beauty in something and some type of connection. So that, I think as artists, we definitely have to be able to be connected to other people. Right. Thank and I you. I think, I think when this, I think when the pandemic is over, people will appreciate <laughs> art even more because um, you locked up in your house and the only thing you have is your art, your music, your drawings, your photograph, and everything that's keeping you sane in this uncertainty. For me, the most yeah. important part is telling the stories of those that whose stories are often distorted and don't tell the true reality. And so I, for me, my mission is to tell those stories and see people in a light that is often distorted, especially for people of color. Thank you. Yeah. Anyone else? Um, I'd like, like to say, say I, that, I um, I'd like to say that for me, art is spiritual food. And it, for me, it's like, this is, we are the nurturers. We are the, the ones who give nurturing to the people because art is like the spiritual food. And we need that right now because we're going through such a, a very horrendous time, an upheaval, a time of purification. Uh, it's not going to be, it's not going to be easy. It's going to be hard. And so we, I, I know for me, I have to listen to music. I have to look at art. Um, I think it's really important for people to have access to artwork because we definitely need it. Music, theater, uh, film, movie, all the arts, you, you know. Thank you, Nadima. Anyone else wanna share? Yeah, uh, it's okay, yeah. I think uh, it, it's okay. Yeah, I think uh, we need to think uh, about uh, ourselves and uh, what we can do and uh, what we done. And uh, we need to planning for the future, you know. We can do something for together or to creating for big change, you know. 
Thank and you. you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Anyone yeah. else? Hope? Go ahead. Yeah, I think hope is also a good thing to share nowadays and some love. Um, even if it's difficult, we can do it, I think. Yes. Thank you. I think for me, I just want to say that, you know, for some reason today, it was a particularly hard day for me. Just I felt the weight of all of the incredible energy in the city. This, this city has a lot of energy. I spent some time out of the city and came back and I just immediately felt all this energy that and right now it's really heavy on me. But I, my role right now is I'm sort of trying to help as many people that I can in whatever way they need. I've sort of put my ego to the side as much as possible. And I'm trying to hang in there and be a help for whomever needs. And I would say that anybody who is listening to me now, if you need any help in any way, I am there for you. And I mean that really. Thank you so much, Lindell. Anyone else? Maybe Patricia or Julan. Um, I just want to hear me. I just want to say that um, I think art reflects our humanity back at us. Um, and that's really important. And someone said hope. I think art is a form of hope and you can't, you can't imagine a better or different world if you can't, you can't hope for a better or different world unless you can imagine it. So imagination and hope are really together. So that's, I think art is a form of hope. Thank you so much. Anyone else in our last few minutes? I, I wanted to say something. I think um, it's also, uh, I think because artists and art, we've always been the great recorders of history and um, our moments all the time. Um, I think as a group, um, it's important to, to sort of continue in that kind of search for uh, human expression and to understand that also this is a period where there are going to be lots of ebb and flows. There are going to be times where some of us are up and some of us are down and, you know, to the extent that we can read those waves and sort of jump in when we're feeling good. Um, and support those who maybe are not in that place and then kind of come back, regenerate, re-record and, and sort of be there. I think that's how we help each other and that's how we give um, shape to our, our moment, our time and, and how our art serves us in that capacity. And so I feel like we are, you know, history has shown since the beginning of time, the human impulse is to record, to create, to document, and here we are. We're all in this together. Um, we all have a role, and to the extent that we can be here for one another, um, I think we can help make this um, a little bit of a better place for, for all of us. And so I salute all of you for being here for contributing, for continuing to work, to continuing to think, to contemplate, to observe, um, and and to do what you do best, which is to relate to humanity and to express it, to record it. Um, and I look forward to seeing, you know, what we do in the next several months to, to sort of continue to uplift all of us. So thank you all for being here. Um, this has been really uh, inspiring. Thank you so much, Nidia. I think these are wonderful uh, words to end with. Uh, I think everyone is going to look to your leadership and NOMA's leadership uh, in, on, a, on a way to build community, to stay connected. Everyone, please uh, stay connected. I know it's, there are difficult times, but we are here for each other. Um, just uh, in terms of practical terms, there's a survey. There is going to be email to all of you, so please fill it up. Uh, also, just as I said, stay connected. Uh, we are here. We need to just be there, be present, and continue to create something that is beautiful and it builds, you know, beauty and it constructs something that is right now in jeopardy. So I think we are healers, and I thank you very much.
I so appreciate your participation. I appreciate your art and uh, stronger together. Thank you. 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 Thank you.